Welcome to worship. It is good to be back uh, with you all. If you're visiting, uh, we took a mission team to Uganda and just got back yesterday. Uh, our planes did get delayed, so I got to bed at 12.30 and got up at 5, so uh, I'm tired. Uh, I also brought a cold back, and just to be assured, it is just a cold. I took a home COVID test this morning just to make sure, and so, uh, but I will be careful not to, you don't want my cold either, so. Uh, we'll keep our distance. Uh, first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who helped while I was gone. Uh, those of you who are, were here for worship, thank you to Kim Osterus who led the, the worship pieces. He did such a great job. And then to, <coughs> hopefully I'll get through the service today, uh, Larry and Ken and Jack for preaching. Uh, so thank you very much to all them and all the rest of you who did uh, things while I was gone to just help things continue. Uh, also, just a couple announcements about the Uganda trip. Uh, those of you who gave us suitcases to take, we'll have those all back uh, next Sunday so you can pick those up. Thank you. Uh, we brought a lot of books over with us, and that was really a fun part of it is uh, opening those suitcases of books and handing them out to kids and seeing their excitement to uh, read through and just, oh, they're so exciting. And thank you to Wilmot who donated those books. A lot of very appropriate, fun uh, elementary school level books. So that was a whole lot of fun. I also want to let you know we will be doing a presentation about the trip, but we're going to wait to do that until August, uh, both so that we have time to kind of process pictures, but then also, uh, as you might know, uh, Kathy and Art and Marcy will be going middle of August uh, and uh, dedicating the new high school, and so they'll have things that they'll want to share too. So we'll all do that together uh, once we're all back. Uh, and then I just want to give a teaser for next week <coughs> so that we pack out the church. Uh, a lot of good things on the mission trip. I'll share some about it uh, in the message today. Uh, but there is someone in Uganda who's in jail right now because of a situation we had uh, while there. So I'll share about that next week. So you won't want to miss next Sunday because uh, we'll be talking about righteous anger and, and a place there is a place for our anger at times, and we had some of that. Uh, so I'll be sharing about that situation and story uh, next Sunday. It wasn't someone on the... On it is a local person oh, okay. who uh, is now in jail, yes. <laughs> Not one of our people. No, we didn't leave anyone behind. We're like, who jail. didn't come back? <laughs> uh, it was a local person who did wrong by us. Uh, and then finally, uh, we love uh, participating with the work of Habitat uh, in our community. And so today, David Milanic is with us. And he's going to share a little bit about what they're doing and how we can partnership with them. Uh, so if you want to maybe grab her mic, Helen's mic, and just share what you have to share. Hi, morning. Uh, yeah, I spoke earlier at the first service. I just wanted to introduce three things that uh, Habitat is doing in town. Uh, number one, you may be familiar with the ReStore, which is across the street from King Supers. It's like a thrift-style store where you can drop off furniture, uh, where you can buy uh, antique furniture if you can find it there. Um, they've got a little lumber yard. Um, you can volunteer at the uh, ReStore as well if you've got some free time and then you want to see what's going on down there. Um, so that's one opportunity, uh, like I said, across from King Supers, like right next to the uh, bagel place there. Um, another thing that we are doing in town is uh, new houses. So if you know the Brook Forest Inn, uh, there's Forest Hills Estates uh, right up there. And then right across the street from the pump house, 
um, is a site uh, where a new house is going up. If you'd like to volunteer with that, um, then you can uh, call into the organization and we'll get you connected with that. Uh, what I'm here to talk about uh, mainly today is our repair program. Um, and you'll see one of these posters uh, there in the church uh, with some of my business cards. So uh, you'll see on this poster two ways to benefit from the repair program. Number one is if you're over 60, uh, you qualify for a program that's with the Denver Region Council of Government. And uh, with no charge, uh, we'll do minor repairs and chores if you fit inside uh, the Jefferson County area to 470 and Clear Creek. Um, inside our entire coverage area that goes all the way to Park County to Kenosha Pass, uh, we include another program that's for repairs that's based on area median income. So that could be a family that uh, qualifies just on, uh, based on how much uh, money they make. So we would do an income match uh, to see if we could help there. Um, the way that a lot of this is working is you just call in, tell us what you need, and then we come down and we'll do a site visit to see if what uh, you are looking for fits within the scope of what we're doing. Um, if you have a Canyon Courier from uh, July 7th, then you'll notice uh, the article for my program in that uh, paper copy. And then there's also, uh, in the online version of the Canyon Courier, you can find the article. And then it'll be running again in August if you want uh, some more information about uh, the contact number and then uh, what we're doing. Um, and I have some uh, business cards. Uh, I will be uh, departing now because I, I spoke to the um, first service, uh, but they're tacked up uh, with uh, this flyer. I think I may have mentioned earlier, so you can grab one there. And if there aren't any, um, you can just uh, go into Google Maps and put in Habitat, and then you'll see the two locations. You'll be calling the location uh, that's associated with the 1520 Evergreen Parkway um, if you want to reach the main headquarters. All right, it looks like I got my talk down to three minutes and 30 seconds, so I'm getting even even better at this. So thanks uh, to see all of you again. Um, I did play the drums uh, for this church at one point about 10 years ago so it's awesome to be back and to see uh, many of the uh, old faces so god bless you all it's great to hear what's going on in this church thank you david and a reminder uh, that our love offering this month does go to habitat so any loose offering you place in the plate today will go help support that work in that ministry in our community so thank you david all right patrick lead us in praise all right let's stand Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. 
cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. true god so loved the world we're great to be here grateful to be here there's little creatures around if you look around todd pointed out a little creature up behind us which is kind of cool when he was supposed to be getting ready for the first song he was looking at creatures up on the hill and that is okay because God's love and his beauty is intoxicating. It's distracting. It's hard to concentrate on what you're going to play. But it's all about praise, right? Right, Eleanor? Right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
shadows your love surrounds me there's nothing for me to fear now for I Gracious Heavenly Father, it is so good to be in your presence, to be in this beautiful place, to worship you and glorify you, to be surrounded by other believers who also know the love of Jesus in their lives. Uh, Lord, just let us make this time a time of joy and peace and uh, being in your presence in a powerful way. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. As we begin worship, it's always valuable to take a little time to reflect on our week, to confess our sins and to repent. Uh, today we'll be thinking about mission and ministry, and so perhaps part of your confession could be maybe that inward look and going, you know what, I haven't been doing my part. I haven't been serving God. I haven't been connecting to a church or, or doing something in the community, maybe Habitat for Humanity. But I just invite you to come honestly before God, confess whatever's on your heart, and know His love for you. Your Heavenly Father loves each of you so deeply, so personally. He loves to forgive you. He loves to make you new. He loves to give you a new life and a new hope in His love. 
receive the fullness of that grace and love into your lives today through Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please share in Christ's body and blood. <clears throat> blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. You may be seated and we'll hear from God's word. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah 42 verses 10 to 13. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them. Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintop. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. The Lord will march out like a champion, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal with a shout he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. The psalm is from, from Psalm 22, verses 23 to 28. Please respond in the bold print. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Refer him, all you descendants of Israel. For he is not despised or scorned the suffering of an afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him and listen to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord All the earth, ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. The New Testament reading is from Romans, chapter 10, verses 11 to 14. As scripture says, anyone who believes him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in and how can they believe in, in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Please rise for the gospel. Our gospel this morning is from Luke, the 10th chapter. <clears throat> After this, the Lord appeared 
to seventy-two others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the workers deserve their wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, as I was preparing uh, for sermons to come, I knew that obviously I'd be just getting back late from a mission trip and thought uh, certainly there'd be a lot of things to say about the joy of missions. And so that was a pretty easy thing to kind of leave because I knew I wouldn't have a lot of time uh, to prepare, which I didn't. And I, I, but I would have a lot of good stories, which I do. Uh, so I think it'll work out well. And so I just encourage you to think about uh, the joy of mission. And I think sometimes we think about missions and we think, well, that's just reserved for missionaries or a certain number of people. Uh, but today I want to encourage you that both ministry and mission is for all God's people. Uh, that you are called to be missionaries and ministers of God's word. Uh, in this community, in this church, and around the world. So the first thing I want to do is briefly consider the difference between ministry and mission. Uh, when we think of ministry, generally we think more internal. Uh, we think about the things that we do together as a body of people who have been called by God uh, to walk together, to become a church, uh, to serve each other, to love each other, to come together to do things like worship, so we spend that time just praising God. Uh, that we spend time in fellowship where we're connecting to other believers, uh, that we spend time in study and Bible study and prayer and discipleship and so that we're, we're growing in that journey of faith. And so ministry is very important. Uh, ministry is what gives us life. It what's, it's what encourages us. It's what helps us to work together uh, to accomplish things uh, in this world. Now missions, I think we often think of as going out. And, and I think that is true, that missions is about going into the world and making disciples as Jesus invited us to do. And so uh, there's an aspect of missions that is very outward, uh, looking around the world, whether it's outward in our own community with things like Habitat for Humanity, uh, that is a mission. It's going beyond just our walls and doing something that needs to be done for God's glory. Uh, and it can be halfway around the world in places uh, like Honduras and Belize and Uganda and in Asia, Europe, all the places that many in this church have, have gone and are supporting ministries uh, and doing very important work. Uh, one of the interesting things, though, about mission is that it can quickly become ministry. And I don't know about you, but for me, uh, when we got to Uganda, it may have been a mission trip. But when I got there, there were people I know. Uh, there are people that have become my family. And so it really quickly was no longer missions, it was ministry. It was working with and uh, for and beside uh, people of my family. Uh, they might look a little darker than me, a little uh, different than me, but truly they are family. They're people I love, they're people that love us, they love you. Uh, whether you know them or not, they know who you are and they know Church of the Cross in Evergreen, and they appreciate uh, your commitment, your faith, and the, all that you do around the world. And so as I said in the announcements, in, in about a month or so after Art Marcy and Kathy get back, we'll do a great big presentation and let everybody share their stories and uh, hear more of those individual stories about what was powerful and meaningful. And so I hope uh, you'll come when we do that, because those stories are truly uh, what they're so joyful uh, to hear the things that God was doing and what brought people joy. Now, one of the, the other things that I think is important is thinking about uh, how we, God uses our various gifts. And for me, one of the greatest joys of mission trips for me is going with my wife, Elizabeth. 
Now, some of you know uh, how bubbly she is, uh, even here, but she goes to a whole different level in a foreign country. And Eric and Carrie can attest to that, Art and Marcy can attest to that. She really works on learning the local language, which is important. And for some of us, it's like, just teach me how to say hello and you know, that'll be good. But she works on it and, and gets to the point where she's able to, to tell stories and, and jokes. And I, I did get tired of her joke uh, by the end, I'll have to be honest. Her biggest joke is speaking in the local language She'll say to them, I'm tired. And they'll say, oh, why are you so tired? And she'll say, well, my, my husband snores. And uh, so that's her favorite joke in Uganda. And she tells it over and over, but they love it. And it's just one of those things that they, uh, that they appreciate because she's, she's taking that time uh, to learn a piece of, of what is important to them and uh, to connect to them. So she's at home sleeping. Uh, while I'm here, but I do want to recognize that that is one of the joys for me is just to, to see her shine and how she uses that gift uh, to really connect to other people. Now, every mission trip that we've taken uh, is a little bit different. And if you're not aware, this church has done three mission trips now to this little community in Uganda. Um, we first got connected to it through David and Pora and Pora, uh, who founded this ministry. And in fact, Todd and uh, some of our band members were a part of his Sifa Sifa band uh, way back in the day. And so we got connected and we went over and our first mission trip, <clears throat> they all took on a different life. And it wasn't that they were intentionally going to be different. But I think just through the work of the Holy Spirit, through the work of our openness to do what was most important at the time, and then listening to them and, and helping them un walk with us and figure out what's best for them at the time, uh, they really became three kind of very different uh, mission trips. And I want to talk about those three differences because they're, they're three wonderful things, but all of them also included aspects of what the other things are too. Uh, so the first year that we went, you may remember, I think, what was it, eight years ago, eight or nine years ago, something like that, um, we as a church decided we were going to build a house for a grandma. And we can build a whole beautiful brick house there for $7,000, which is just amazing in and of itself. Uh, but this church came together and we did fundraisers. We did a talent show. Maybe you remember doing that and people using their various gifts to raise money so that we could build a house for a grandma. And so we did and we went over and we worked alongside their crew, uh, the Shelters in the Storm crew. And, and did the work uh, from uh, carrying dirt and water from down below to uh, helping lay block and bring block for the guys to put in, uh, tuck pointing the blocks after they got put in, uh, carrying cement to, to make a nice floor in and helping uh, cut the, the wood to make rafters for the roof. And so that mission trip really was a work mission trip. Now, a lot of times when we think about mission trips, we think about work. We're going to do something. And, and there's great value to that. There's, there's something wonderful about uh, going and working with people and seeing at the end the product of your labor and to see this building that there wasn't one and now there's this building that this grandma will live in. And, and so our first mission trip, I, I really think, uh, was a work mission trip, which was great. Um, and I think some of you might think, well, that's what I want to do if I go on a mission trip. Our second mission trip, not again planned, I think became really more of a fellowship mission trip. Uh, in other words, a relationship mission trip where we really connected to people, got to know people. Uh, part of that again was intentional because we thought, you know, we've been there, we've been welcomed by, by the school, but we want to really interact with the kids. And so we asked, can we really connect the kids? And so we went down to the ball field and we played games with them and brought our, our uh, parachutes and did parachutes with them and, and sang songs like the hippo song with them. Hip, hip, hip. I'll teach you later if you want to learn the hippo song. A uh, whole lot of fun. Uh, Marcy brought some curriculum and helped teach the teachers uh, a, a good a process and teaching there. And so that was one aspect that was really kind of relational and connecting. Uh, another piece of that one that occurred was, uh, it was before COVID, and so we went pretty much every supper and ate in one of the staff members' homes. And so we went into their personal space 
and some of them were very simple and some of them were nicer. Uh, but <coughs> again, in that mission trip, a lot of relationships, a lot of connections, a lot of being uh, personally with the people. And again, that was very different, uh, but it was also valuable. Uh, you might remember we brought over a soundboard for Pastor Jennifer. Uh, we went to Pastor Jennifer's church and uh, we're just blessed by connecting to another ministry uh, there. Uh, got to level the ground for Pastor Jennifer's house. Uh, so there was still the work piece there, but I'd really call that mission trip the, the fellowship here. <clears throat> I am going to make it. Now this year, I would call the celebration year. Uh, over there, it is very important to celebrate. They love celebrations. They love celebrating God. They love celebrating God's work. And because of COVID, uh, none, of, none of the Christ State staff, anyone, no one's been there for over two years. And so work has continued. Grandma houses have been built, uh, but they didn't have the parties because they wanted some of us over there uh, to be a part of that. So we dedicated three grandma houses. Uh, we also had a party at the high school. And so uh, it was really a celebration year. A lot of partying, a lot of eating, a lot of singing, a lot of praying and dancing and hearing uh, stories from the grandmothers uh, as well. And so you might have read a little bit about uh, the grandmother houses uh, in the newsletter. And so as you think about those three, they're very different ones. Some of you might say, well, I would have preferred to be at the building one. Actually, for me, that is the easiest. I like to build. I like to work. That's pretty easy. This one for me was the hardest uh, because I had to be on all the time. It's like, well, pastor's here. Now will you do a speech for the grandma? And I'm like, I don't want to do another speech for the grandma. And, and so uh, there is that aspect of missions and ministry where Sometimes you have to do what you don't want to do. Uh, sometimes you have to do the things that you're called upon to stretch yourself, uh, to be ready and to be available. Now, the final piece of wisdom that I want to share with you, and you might think, well, I wasn't on the mission trip, and so this isn't relating to me. And, but this really relates to both mission and ministry. And that is that challenge that they both take a lot out of you. Their work, they're hard. They can... They can drain you, you, they can burn you out. You can get to a point where you say, I know this is valuable and important, but I don't know that I wanna do it anymore. And so I wanna encourage you to think about uh, your journey of ministry and mission, uh, to think about both of those things. Are there things that you're involved in in the church as we care for each other and work together? Are there things in which you do uh, outwardly in ways of caring for other people in different ways? And to think about how you care for yourself, <clears throat> physically, emotionally, spiritually, in that. Now, some of you have probably been to those points where you felt burned out serving on council or burned out leading a Bible study or burned out working in the Sunday school or whatever it might be. And I want to encourage you in two things. Number one, it's okay to shift from time to time and say, now this season I'm going to do this or that. Uh, also, to take care of yourself, uh, to, to do what you need to do to keep strong. But the final thing is, I think, just being aware of that. <coughs> just being aware that we are called to work, and it's going to be hard, and it's going to take a toll on you from sometimes, but that's okay. As we, as we think about sports, that, that same thing occurs. If you want to be a really good athlete at any one thing, what do you do? You basically destroy your body. You, you rip up your muscles, you get to the point of exhaustion, but then you become stronger because of that. And so as you think about all that you do, I, I hope you just keep that in mind. You might think, well, I go through these seasons where I just feel burned out. Know that that's okay. Know that those times are going to happen in ministry and mission. And just realize and let it make you stronger and a better person for God. Now I want to uh, think about four things of why we do ministry and mission. Now the first one is because God has asked us to do it. If your heavenly da da daddy says, you know people, you didn't become a Christian just to come and sit in the pew and, and just smile. You came to be a part of my work, uh, to work with me, beside me, to help me. Uh, you might have the gifts that are absolutely needed at a certain point in a certain way that nobody else has. 
And so God has invited us to be a part of his work. Number two, it builds the kingdom of God. And I hope you really think about that. I think sometimes, it, especially if you're doing things like, well, I just do this little thing for Sunday. I just set up the altar, or I just usher, or I just mow the lawn, or I just whatever. It, it's really easy sometimes to minimize what you do, but you need to know that it matters. Uh, everything from the little to the small, it matters. And God needs each of us to do our little pieces, our little parts, and together, uh, that comes together and does something just truly truly amazing it builds the kingdom of God and then finally it builds you again in that image as you get tired of working it builds you up you become stronger you become uh, wiser in your gifts and your ability to be used by God we heard in our text from Romans chapter 10 uh, today anyone who believes in Jesus will never be put to shame for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile the same Lord is Lord of all. And I'd encourage you to hear that. <coughs> Instead of Jew and Gentile, there's no difference between U.S. citizen and Ugandan, uh, at least in this context. Uh, that we are the same family. We're the same part of God's uh, believers. We're working together. They may be the other side of the world, but they are our family, and that I'd encourage you to see them that way. The last thing I want to just mention uh, today uh, is some of the joy that, that does come from mission and ministry. Uh, one of the things when we, we were there, I really wanted to go find Rose. Now, maybe some of you don't know who Rose is, uh, but a few years back when we went, Bob Inman, who has since passed and is with the Lord, uh, was at one of the celebrations we were at, and this little Rose came up and sat on his lap. And he fell in love with Rose and, and was able to be her sponsor. Uh, so help pay her school fees, help with those kind of things that she needed. And so we got there and I was looking for Rose. I was looking for Rose. Because in my mind, Rose must still be this big. We found Rose. Rose is taller than Bethany. And we got some beautiful pictures with Lydia, who's Bethany's friends, and Bethany with Rose. And I was just like, this is a beautiful woman. And just seeing how she had grown and, and the difference that this process had made in her life, uh, just the joy in the person that she was, was such a blessing. Now, another thing that I did in, in all those celebration talks that I kept having to give uh, was <clears throat> draw out that piece that we are one family. And so I would then draw it to the grandma who was receiving a new house. And I said, in this, in this gift, you now have a new son. I'm your new son. And so I'd run up and I'd give her a hug. And, and I said, you do realize this means next time I come, you better have a bedroom ready for me uh, so that I can stay with you. And they'd say yes. And I said, if you ever come here, you, I have a bedroom for you. And that's a powerful image of the family of God, that we are one family. And I hope again that you see that. <coughs> And we're one family with those that need in our own community who need habitat houses. That we're one with those who need to go to Echo for help. That we're one with brothers and sisters in Honduras and Belize and Uganda and around the world. That God calls us uh, together to work together, to serve together, and to make a difference for Jesus in the world. So I want to just encourage you in the joy of mission. I hope you have areas you see yourself participating, uh, whether in little or small, small or big ways. And just continue to be used by God. Make yourself available uh, to be used by Him. In Jesus' name, amen. I made it, barely. You did good. Thanks. Your voice sounded kind of sexy. That kind of raspy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Can we edit that out of the video? All right, that's going to be brought up at the next meeting. <laughs> we need Patrick. We need Patrick to submit what he's going to say before each service. <laughs> Above all powers, above all kings, above all. 
Next, we're going to do a Ugandan <clears throat> offering, so this is going to take a while. So first what we'll do is you all bring up your offering and leave it here, and then we'll guilt you that you didn't get enough, and so we'll do that again, and then after that's been done, you will bring forward your eggs and your chickens and sugar cane, and, and then we'll auction it off. So if you need a chicken to go home with you today, we'll have one, uh, because somebody brought one, right? Of course. No, we won't do that. Uh, but it usually takes about a half an hour to do offering in, in Uganda, so we won't do that. But if you have an offering, you can leave it up at, at the back or send that into our church office if you're uh, watching online. Let's stand and spend a little time in prayer.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy of mission and ministry that you call us into with you. Lord, I thank you for this church and for uh, the many faithful giving people that are a part of this body, uh, for their faithfulness and love, how we work together to accomplish amazing and great things. Uh, Lord, just thank you for that, that gift. I am blessed and uh, blessed to be a part of this body of Christ. And Lord, we pray specifically for Habitat. Uh, we pray for uh, their work in our community as well as around the world. Uh, we pray for the projects they have going on here uh, with the houses and also the repair uh, projects that they have. Uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, we would be generous in our giving to them financially, but also uh, consider how we might participate uh, in that work as well in our own community. And Lord, I pray for our mission team from Uganda. <clears throat> we thank you for the experiences that we had. Uh, we pray that it did make a difference uh, to them as well, that as we walked with them and became a part of each other's families, that uh, that would be something we'd carry uh, with us uh, for the rest of our lives. And, and Father, I recognize that we are just still broken people in our bodies, minds, emotions, relationships, and spirit. So we lift to you now those we know need healing and care in their lives. For Skip and Lori, for struggling marriages, for myself, for Tommy, for David, for Bob, for Orville. <clears throat> Father, you know each of these people, each of these situations. Lord, bring them the the healing, the peace, the joy, the power that they need in their current situations. And Father, if there are any other prayers in the hearts of your people, we lift them to you now. Father, you are good and we love you so much. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Let's sing our closing song. <clears throat>
It's so good to worship with you today. I pray that you were blessed by something, uh, whether it was the music or a lesson or the message or Patrick's humor or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I pray that you would go and just think about what is your mission and ministry and I just let God speak to you and use you in, in great and wonderful ways this week. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As people of Church of the Cross, we proclaim the love of Jesus Christ in all we do for the glory of God. Oh.